Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Wednesday evening. It is hump day, and boy, has today been a humping mother humping day. You probably heard that Demarcus Lawrence is out for the next six to eight weeks with a broken foot in practice. Not a game now. Not 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 a game. He got hurt in practice. And we've gone through, I've got a couple of videos up on things that the Cowboys can do, looking at the other players that we have that'll be the next man up and so on. We'll see how this affects the Vegas line for the Cowboys and see if we get a few more points. But speaking of points here, you know I've got my homies. I am rolling with the homies. What's happening? D2 Stu, a.k.a. Mr. Wolf. What's up? How you doing, Stu? Doing good, boss. Doing good. Doing Looking good. To beating Vegas again this week, and hopefully the Cowboys can next man it up good enough to get past the Chargers. All right. That, that sounds like a winner. And then we've got brother Rain Man Roz. What's up, Rain Man? Did you make it rain this week? That's what I want to know. Oh, we got Vegas. And we got paid. What, 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 uh, wait a minute, there's money? We don't money? pay a lot, so we don't get paid a lot. But okay. Vegas is definitely paying us. So how did we do last week with our picks? So you're saying we did better than Vegas. So we cleared all inputs into Vegas and made a profit. That's number one. That's most important above all. Second, the wolf hit 56% of his picks, 9 out of 16 games. So more than half by one game. Uh-huh. Vegas only got 38%, which is 6. Wow. So you're saying that Vegas is ass. And then Weird. I got half exactly 8 out of 16. Okay. And the Joe Boo got 7, which is 44%, and still beat Vegas. Okay. That's three so for I'm three. below 500. All right, all right. So I'm bringing up the rear. The, 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 the wolf is kicking ass. But you know what? It's another week and another opportunity to get back in this shit, okay? Um, let me ask you guys about the Joe Boo Sports Fantasy League before we go on to the picks. How do we do hey, on that? Uh, can I throw out some breaking news? Uh-oh, breaking news? What breaking news? So breaking news, Chase Claypool. And Juju Smith-Schuster, both uh -oh. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. Uh, they got live shows on TikTok right now. Uh, I mean, I'm just, just letting you know. They're, they're actually live. They're not Chase Claypool was right. putting your hand in a box and feel what's in there and guess what it is blindfolded. Okay, sorry. I thought when you said, you know, the receivers for the Steelers, that maybe they both tested positive for COVID or something. Right. You know, right. some. I mean, uh, come on. Come on, man. Well, they do have a come crowd in their, in their houses right now, so get ready for the weekend. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, briefly, how did we do in the fantasy leagues? Mm -hmm. We're going to get around to that. Uh or do you want to, you want to do the, one, half the teams lost? Oh, okay. Do you, or do you want to, you want to go through the picks first? We can do no, 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 no. It's okay. JSR three. You and you know you and I draft together. Yeah. <laughs> and that I mean that was just a walk away win. There was no concern whatsoever. Okay. Uh, JS and, I, and I personally we, won in JSR two. Okay. We had a we had a nail biter with DMV and JSR one. With the got, uh, Baltimore we game? We got Lamar and Kelsey, but it was closer than I thought it would be at, at, after Lamar started going. But we held in there until that about the fourth quarter of that, that Monday night game, and then uh, it was just a crazy finish. That JSR2, mm -hmm. uh, sitting Godwin didn't do us any favors, but me doubling down on breaking my own advice. Trust your studs. Don't get cute. Don't tamper with your roster the night before the day of, like Ross likes to point out. You're not going to find out anything Saturday or Sunday that you haven't already prepared yourself for. Okay. Uh, I got cute. I went with Javante Williams, who didn't see a 70-yard touchdown that 
Melvin Gordon came in for. Uh, and I benched Debo Samuel, who had about 30 points. So I think he said you lost. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Uh, the the big yeah. question I have is is how did Troy Daniels do in five with Dak Prescott? I'm not mistaken. Troy won, didn't he? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Dak Dak won all but two game two leagues, I believe. Okay. So Troy Daniels and then two of your teams. So you're saying One some of my teams Dak. were at. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. I, so three out of five is not bad for Dak. And if it wasn't for Dak, we wouldn't have been in the two that, that we wound up losing. That was a great matchup with DMB. Credit credit to his team there. Yeah, it was only a couple and points then, difference on that. I know. So I wish I knew who he was texting with during the draft. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Who got the most points in fantasy this past week? Who was the fantasy point leader? I mean, individual, actually, NFL player. Jameis Winston. Really? Who saw that coming? Five freaking touchdowns on 128 yards. That was freaking Honestly, okay. if you were to ask the fantasy world, nobody saw it coming because he had no receivers. Mm-hmm. Jair Alexander, uh, uh, Adrian Amos, and you know the, the Green Bay secondary is actually the strength of their defense. Okay. So if anything, you run all over them. Mm-hmm. But no, Jameis is going to go ahead and throw to some dude named Deontay Harris, who's a special <laughs> teams kick returner. Right. Yeah. So nobody it, saw it coming. Okay. And well, anybody tells you they did, they lie. Well, we got a lot of liars. Unless you're there. a diehard Saints fan, you did not see that shit coming. All right. So let me ask another question then. Who was the biggest fantasy dog? And I think I can probably already answer that. Um, does he play for uh, the Green Bay Packers? <clears throat> no. That Aaron Rodgers, what what people expected him to do? Are you telling me that, that he didn't that had a greater impact on games being a dog? I would say Rodgers. Oh, but absolutely. If 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 you're talking about who made people lose, yeah, yeah. But the worst player was definitely negative point Rojo. Yeah, that was unless right. you were in a league where you got negative point Rodgers. Okay, got it's, you. it's one or the other. But yeah. safe to say that a lot of people probably played Aaron Rodgers and were disappointed. Yeah, I would have been 10 out of 16 in our pick em last week had he actually showed up to play. Okay. Hey, who was the – who's wasn't there a guy that owns part of the Packers that called the Saints to win? Yeah, I don't know that genius. I uh, I need you to mean that two timer? more often on the Packers maybe. But I, uh, I don't. So he can – but his lips where the sun don't shine. Okay. But he was right, 1,000%. I give you all the credit in the world. I, Man, Rodgers looked worse than I've ever, than any of us have ever seen him play. Um, did, have you heard some of the he, – he's making excuses. I don't know if you've heard some of these. He actually – I was – and I kind of have heard it because I was in my workshop at the table, so I just got off, and he was on the Cal, – Colin Cowherd was talking about him. But he said that the lack of work in preseason – that he's rusty. And I'm sitting there thinking, aren't you the one that didn't show up for OTAs? Yeah, he did that to himself. And then I read... He's smiling for the first time tonight. Well, well, and here was another one that was funny. He blamed his first interception on getting hit in the nuts. Yes, yes, double tapped. Right. Not just hit, but Uh, double tapped. So, so wait, wait, wait. So, what I actually made for a title for the video was... Rogers blames interception on D's nuts. <laughs> uh, <I> mean, <laughs> my question is, did he get hit twice because they missed both the first time? Oh, or, Lord. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we could do a lot of different jokes on this one that would be very untactful. And I think I'm going to just leave that one there. But, you know, D's nuts is about as far as I'm going to go on it. But literally, I was kind of surprised that he didn't pull his relax. Don't worry about it. Instead, it was just kind of like, oh, it's this, 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 and this. And I'm wondering if that's going to be Aaron Rodgers for the season, like like we've kind of said. He's not there to win. He's there for revenge and getting paid so he doesn't get fined. I will. Sorry, I was erasing the – I didn't know if you wanted to know why we lost last week. But anyways, uh, I will say that analytically – uh-huh. And it's weird because you would think I would know this, but I didn't. Yeah. 
analytically speaking, uh, he generally fails in Florida. Okay. And that hasn't mattered what team or what year he's down there. Um, this is actually analytically not a surprise. So maybe I did know that, and that's why I went with Saints. I don't know, but being in Jacksonville, being in the heat, being in Florida, who knows what it is. Being pissed but he off generally and having is a miserable fit. as a player down there. Okay. All right. Okay, oh, so the Saints the Saints knew that when they picked the location and made travel tough on the Packers. Well, that it does cuz the humidity and you know cuz like actually we were in Green Bay for a community build um for a kickoff uh after they ended up winning their their Super Bowl, the one Aaron Rodgers had. And I remember in September being there and it was chilly. It was actually like 65 degrees and I'm kind of like you know, at home, you know, Northern Virginia, it's like in the mid '80s or so. And when we did the kickoff in New Orleans, it was freaking 95 degrees and high humidity. So it is a major difference. It's a culture shock when you're going from Green Bay, because basically Green Bay is kind of like uh, your summer's kind of kind of spring-like compared to the rest of the country, and then the rest of the time it's just kind of cool or snowy as hell. Uh, down down here in Texas, even worse down in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to take us too far off the topic, but I do want to point out one little thing. And it's kind of weird now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. But I put on, you know, my battle dress here for fighting against Vegas. Because we round one round one. Now we're going to take fight to them round uh -oh. week two. I'll, I'll drink to that. I will too. Let me get my room. Okay, so. And I'll be right back. That said. In 2006, when I came home from my Iraq, my last, my second and last deployment, mm -hmm. three days after I was, we have uh, what they call a, a mini lockdown, and you go through paper processing and medical checks and maybe a shot or two. Yeah. When you get released from that, you basically go home. Now, that's the first time you go home, even after you've been home, so to speak. Okay. Three days after release point. Um, and my wife arranged this with my dad for my birthday, which was the month prior. They flew me to Lambeau, all right, where my uncle, who's also a shareholder, and aunt, and my dad all had set up a actual birthday party right out, right on the edge. Because in Green Bay, you got to understand everybody's backyard is right across the street, tailgate, it, yeah. right? So. They actually got right on the edge of the pavement for Lambeau Field in mm -hmm. the grass in somebody's backyard. Had a birthday party for me there. We went in and watched the game. I'm not sure that even that loss that day was the first or last that they have had against the Saints. But the Saints have beaten them regularly. Okay. Well, that's interesting to know. So with that being said... How about we get on to our pick segment, and um, we're going to start Yeah, because they're going to win this week. Okay. The, the Packers? Okay, well. Yeah. They got a nice get-right game coming. Well, <clears throat> let's start with the uh, <laughs> the tale of two cities here. We have uh, the Washington football team that's dealing with some shit, uh, you know, that's literally raining yeah. down on <laughs> the fans. And, <laughs> and I'm not talking about the normal stuff. I'm talking about the pipe that they say wasn't a sewer pipe. But regardless – the New York Giants aren't much better because they've literally got maggots in the ketchup, and they've got fans that are putting ketchup on meatball subs. So you, you, this is just going to be an ugly-ass game. And currently, the Giants going to FedEx Field are getting three and a half points. Thoughts, guys? I'll, I'll take that one as, as the NFC East Cowboys fan in here. And I've been looking at this one all day. This is a pick em segment. We need to retroactively go back and have a toilet bowl game of the week. We would have picked, I'm assuming, <laughs> Jacksonville-Houston last week. But this week starts Thursday night with the Giants versus the Redskins. <sighs> Two good defenses. Danny Dimes, a busted up Barkley if he even, even plays. Yeah. And Tyler Heineke. Shit. Give him. I, I like I like the Redskins over the Giants. The Washington football team. 
I like them to win it and to cover the spread. Okay. Brother Ross? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. You got you got you got shit pouring on you <laughs> or you got put the maggots in you. Um <laughs> Well, you could you could put that together. You can get the maggots <laughs> and then drop it out. <laughs> Uh, uh, and then rain on the crowd. But anyway, it's bad. Taylor Heineke, that Washington defense, and, and make no mistake, that Washington defense is real. Herbert, okay. they came in. They did a wonderful job on him. Mm-hmm. Took Fitzpatrick out. And remember, everybody preps for that first game of the year. Once Fitzpatrick was out, it was pretty much a free-for-all. And Heineke rallied them, but... Giants going to win this. They are not going to have Evan Ingram. Barkley will not be 100%. And he will be on a pitch count. Make no mistake. He is and will be on a pitch count. Yeah. And I still think that there is just something weird that's about to happen. And that's, you're picking the Giants. I'm going to take the Giants with the three points. Thinking it's going to be a one or two point game and that three point spread is going to tip the balance. And I am actually locking this in as one of my spread picks of the week. Okay. I I hate to say that I'm going to pick the Washington football team, but I'm going to pick the Washington football team because Danny Dollar Store or Danny Brother Can I Fumble has had, I want to say, 30 fumbles in 28 games in his career. He does one every single week. And that may be the difference maker in this game for an easy score for the Washington football team. And I actually believe that Tyler Heineke is actually a better option than Ryan Fitzpatrick. I just believe that uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is just, he's just kind of done. And we all know that quarterbacks go to Washington to die. Heineke seems to be more of a gunslinger. And I kind of think that the team will actually rally behind him. So I'm going to take Washington on that one. Okay. Heineke is a better player than people give credit. So it's, yeah. it's not against him that I'm picking the Giants. It's, it's the weirdness in my mind. Okay. Um, Danny Dines has never met a ball that he doesn't like to fumble. And, that, yeah. I, I, th- I think Heineke gets the job done. I think so. Oh, I think so, too. All right. I think we can send that shit out the door. There we go. Man, stop messing with this shit. Okay. We got the Cincinnati Bengals going to Soldier Field, uh, getting two and a half points. Um, I will say that Cincinnati was a big surprise to me, pulling up the win. The Bears, well, the Bears are who we thought they were, and they stink. Who wants to take this one first? Go ahead, Ross. Actually, I'd like to know what Joe Boo's going to pick first. He uh, always gets that last choice to break the tie. Okay. I, I'm going to go. i tell you what. I'm going to take Cincinnati to two and a half points. And I am going to agree because I just have a feeling that if Chase is on point, mm-hmm. that offense is sufficient. Mm-hmm. If we had a graphics department, there'd be a broom right now because that's a clean sweep. Okay. All right. So we need to work on the graphics. Okay. We have the Rams, who had the route this past week, uh, dropping uh, four points, going to Indianapolis with Carson Wentz. Uh, who wants to go first on this one? That's you, Ross. I can, I can keep this simple. Okay. My first thought was the Colts. Right? They're not going to drop two in a row. And then I remembered, oh, yeah. Carson Wentz. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Welcome, meet Aaron Donald. There you go. Carson Wentz is not going to win a shootout with Matt Stafford because Aaron Donald is going to remind Carson Wentz that he should stay in fifth. Yes. And I'm going to agree with you on that one. I'll take the, uh, I'll drop the four, four points on that one and take the Rams. Get those brooms out. Stafford was looking okay. sharp. Okay. All right. We have Denver coming in feeling good about themselves with Teddy Bridgewater and uh, after beating the Giants, going against the Jags. Denver, of course, um, is giving up six points. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to take Denver. That's, it's not even a question. The Jags are terrible. Thank God we did not sign Urban Meyer as our head coach. We dodged the bullet there, guys. Yes, indeed we did. We'll see. 
Jerry's still out on McCarthy for me, but thank God we didn't get him. Uh, yeah, Jack Stink. Take the other side of the ball all day long. Denver, that's that game hurts me. And I know it's not a fancy football show, but outside of CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott, Jerry Judy was my o- most owned player of 2021. 13 shares across 23 leagues. Uh, I hate for him that he went down like he did last week. Mm-hmm. It's a fancy manager. It sucks. Denver's defense is legit. Give me Denver. Okay. All right. Uh, and that is a sweep. clean sweep. Okay. We're giving up six points, but yep. the most important thing out of this entire game is going to come down to Trevor Lawrence, mm-hmm. and he looked like a rookie quarterback. Not yes. a bad one, right? but he looked like a rookie. The speed of the game right now is too much for him. There you go. All right, so then we have Buffalo going to Miami. Buffalo, almost. this is almost a must-win for Buffalo in my mind. They are minus three and a half points. How you feel about this one, Brother Ross, after uh, your Miami Dolphins get the big win? Are you, oh, I guess I, I guess you can't see the spinning Dolphins helmet in the background there. <laughs> I can see right, it. Because, but, because but, I'll tell you right now, uh-huh. any questions? Well, you know, I, I've seen a Packer gear and stuff in there too, but you also picked the New Orleans Saints last week. Yeah, there ain't no Packers gear up in here. But, uh, okay. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> uh, what, happened no, to, what happened I to am, Joe Barty? I am taking Miami for the upset. Okay. Uh, you know what? You're giving three and a half points as a visitor. Miami is on a high. Mm-hmm. And they got a blueprint from Pittsburgh, who is not as good as you think they are. Mm-hmm. They got the blueprint. They're smart enough. Brian Flores is smart enough to take that blueprint and apply it to this game. Okay. And Stu? But is Tua good enough on the other side to go toe-to-toe with Josh Allen? Give me Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. I picked you. I had to watch my mouth right there there because I had something to say. (laughs) Say it. That's your team. I I actually like Tua. You know, I like Tua, but give me Josh Allen uh, to come out on fire this week. Okay. All right. (laughs) Were you? Oh, I'm going with Buffalo. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna. Go, I'm sorry. Buffalo can't afford to go down two games right now. No, but Miami going up two and zero. I don't think. I, I think the Buffalo looks at this like we got to win this game. Right, because right. Miami never went seventeen and zero. Well, you, exactly. All right, I'll we be have happy the, for you if you do, but it's not happening. We have the Raiders coming off the big win against uh, Baltimore, going against Pittsburgh at Hyde Field, getting five and a half points for the Raiders. Um. I'm going to take Pittsburgh myself on that one. And I am going to agree. Uh-huh. Uh, the Raiders, look, they got lucky. Let's be real. That was one of the craziest finishes I think I've seen ever. All right. Uh, that said, it's still the Raiders. So give me the other side. San Francisco going to the stink to take on the Eagles that the Eagle fans have literally already, uh, you know, started printing out uh, NFC East champs uh, 2021. I'm going to take uh, – it's off the board? I don't see any point spread on that one. Three and a half. Uh, three and a half. Um, minus three and a half to the 49ers. I'll take the 49ers. I'll, I'll never pick the Eagles. <laughs> Two. 49ers got some injuries on defense. You'd probably know a little bit more there, but I'm still going to go with the 49ers. Elijah Kinlaw is having a little bit of an issue. Um, uh, was it Greenlaw went down as well? Uh, Al Shahir is going to step in at linebacker for him. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Eagles all day. Wow. Okay. All right, we've got New Orleans versus Carolina. New Orleans uh, going to Bank of America um, is uh, minus three. And I'm going to take New Orleans on that one. That defense of theirs versus uh, Josh Allen. Um, excuse me, uh, Sam Darnold. Yeah, no chance. When them Saints, not going to do it two weeks in a row. Give me the Saints. I'm not turning my back against Carolina. 
Saints all day. Ross? Okay, you confused me for a moment. You said not turn your back on Carolina, but I'm turning my back on Carolina because really the defensive line, the linebackers, the DBs, tell me how the Saint, uh, the Panthers actually stopped the Saints. Um, they, yeah, they're high. The Saints are winning this. Just move on. It's, it's Sam Darnold. You said it at the That's beginning. Right. We're wasting time. There you go. Sam Darnold, go to bed. Okay. New Cavs England. Good, but not that good. New England going to New York to take on the Jets, 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 uh, giving away six points. I can tell you right now, I ain't betting against uh, New England on that one. Starch Patriots. New England. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree. There's Isn't there some stat that during the Tom Brady era, there's, oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm still taking the Patriots. So. Mac okay. Jones gets his that's, first win. That, that, that's a sweep. All right, then we've got Houston versus Cleveland going to First Energy Field. Houston getting 12 and a half points. Tyrod Taylor. 12 and a half, Stu. That's yeah. a lot. Hmm. I'll tell you right now, 12 and a half is a huge, huge uh spread that I would normally bet against. I would actually almost always take those points. Um after what we saw last weekend, no way that the Texans cover that twelve point spread. I honestly think the Browns could put Tyrod down and uh keep this down to like a three point game if they don't shut him out. I'm all over the Browns on this one. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it almost feels like low hanging fruit, and then you throw in the twelve point spread, and you go, "Oh, like I just did." But I, Baker and that offense is better than it gets credit for, and Houston is Houston. Yeah, Tyra, t- yeah. Give me, give me Cleveland. Uh, we'll sweep that one. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons giving up twelve and a half points going against Tampa Bay. Real quick, Stu really struggled with that one. Uh, you know, I just i i think that's the first one you really struggled with. The rest of them, you you've been pretty confident about. Yeah, I, that's just that's just some weirdness inside my head and affinity for Tyrod Taylor. But I, well, let me ask you this one: He just called out the game Falcons Buccaneers. Buccaneers are at home, twelve and a half point favorite. Another twelve and a half point dog. Uh, they're, 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 yeah, twelve and a half point dog. No, no, Buccaneers are favorite. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative. Falcons, I'm sorry. Falcons are twelve and a half dogs. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I, I got to take Tampa Bay on that. I, I'm uh, going against every piece of logic in my head, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Atlanta can cover, but Tampa Bay wins the game. Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof. Stu, you and I are in this together. We're taking the spread. I'm actually locking in the Falcons to cover that spread inside of 12 and a half points. Okay, all right. I think Matty Ice has basically melted, and he's a puddle on the field myself, but that's just me. We have Minnesota getting three and a half going to Arizona. I will take the Falcons on that game. Kurt freaking Cousins in Minnesota, meh. Cardinals. <laughs> How can you say some stuff like Matty Ice being melting and then you're like, hey, let's just move on to the next game? <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I do it, man. All right. Yeah, I think we're, I think you're sweeping. You know, you said at the beginning, though, Mark, that there were a lot of games that were kind of pretty easy to pick. Um, we are, we are sweeping quite a few of these games as a group. Well, and then, of course, the games will be crazy, kind of like, you know, um, uh, the Texans winning, you know, when shit like that you don't expect. But uh, Dallas versus the Chargers, currently the line is three and a half. That may end up moving now that Demarcus Lawrence is injured. Um, I'm going to take the Cowboys because, well, I'm a homer, and I believe that the Cowboys actually man up, and with them playing in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, that's like a home game for the Cowboys. There's going to be so many Cowboy fans in there, it's not even going to be funny. 
Um, I'll take the three and a half points. Team 40 Burger and a Micah Parsons breakout. San Diego keeps it close, but not close enough. Give me the Cowboys for the win and the spread. And for the second week in a row. Okay. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I just checked my sheet, and I did take the Cowboys. Oh, I was going to say, second week in a row, I went against. This time, you know what? I did take that spread. Uh huh. Um, the spread has dropped to just three points even. Really? But okay. that's the most recent. As of, I'm looking at it. I just refreshed it right now. And it's it's three-point game, uh, minus 175 for the Chargers. Are, are they Randy Gregory? If you take a look at Armstrong and... We got Golston back, don't we? I think and so. They brought an eye up, right? We got yeah. guys to rotate in there. Parson well, comes out and shows out, and, and the offense is fired up. We got this. All right, we got Tennessee getting five and a half going against Seattle. Uh, Tennessee, after taking that ass whipping, um, will they rebound going to uh, Seattle? That's a tough place to play. Um, I'll, I'm going to take the Seahawks on that one. I've been in there, and that's like being inside a jet engine. That 12th man. What's the spread on that? Uh, Titans get five, five and a half points. Give me Seattle. That's another clean sweep. All right. KC minus three and a half against Baltimore. This is where I feel dirty because... While I love what the Chiefs are doing, I am more in love with what the defense of the Ravens is supposed to be. So I'm taking the Chiefs, and I feel dirty because, I mean, the Ra- Raiders just ran the points up. How do they stop the Chiefs, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I think you said it all right there. Give me the Chiefs. All right. And then the final game, the Monday night thriller, the Detroit Lions versus the Green Bay Packers. The Lions getting 11 points. You know what? I'm going to take those 11 points. I'm going to take them. Dan Campbell talking about eating people off at the kneecaps, and they end up making a run back in that game against the 49ers. And Aaron Rodgers, we know he's there to burn that mother humper down. I'm going to take the 11 points with the Lions. Hey, I think Rodgers has a good get-right game here, but give me the 11 points. Give me the Packers for the win, but the Lions to cover the spread. <laughs> I drop, I drop my mic. Okay. Go figure that one out, right? Okay. I'm taking the minus 11. If my Packers are going to show y'all why the Lions oh. don't like to come to Lambeau. Lamb. It's not that cold. Now, there ain't no tundra out there right now. Oh, there's there's more about Lambo than just the tundra. Okay. And uh, look, let's be honest for a minute. They came back on San Francisco because San Francisco stopped playing hard. Garbage ball. They started time. rotating people in. They had injuries to the defense, Garbage and their time. offense sucked. Okay, they 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 weren't really moving the ball in the second half. They were just running the ball, trying to run out the clock, which is why all the people that went on this Elijah Mitchell psycho thing all week, okay, you forget that they were just trying to run out the clock, not actually win the game. So Detroit had an opportunity based on the way San Francisco played, not based on the way Detroit played. Gotcha. In other words, garbage time. Absolutely. Where's Rasheed? That's garbage time. That's not padding your stats. All right. That's garbage time. Well, that's what we got for our picks, y'all. Hopefully, uh, we'll keep ahead of Vegas. Hopefully, I can get back in this race because it sounds like I was ass this week. Uh, coming up Saturday night, oh, excuse me, Saturday afternoon, 3.30, we'll do a fantasy football recap. Now, let me, you know, I, I'm still that fantasy football guy. I'm fortunate that I have a GM. If you don't have a GM and you're your own GM, what should you be doing here midweek for your fantasy football team? Well, most waiver wires are processed already. So at this point, you're 
putting in your homework, whatever time you got, whether you put in insane amounts of time like Roz to another tier like myself, or you just have a chance to listen to a podcast, you take a look at your team, you set your rosters with your studs, and throughout the course of the week until you get to Friday, uh, once you get there, just trust yourself. Don't. This will be week two that I'm telling you to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, under the segment of do what I say, not what I do. Okay. Uh, it was week one, uh, and I shot myself in the foot by not taking my own advice and Roz's advice. Set it and forget it by Friday. Don't touch it Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if you've got roster needs like a running back and you weren't able to get one on the waiver wire, start looking around your league. See who if you've got extra wide receivers that are good. Try to find somebody that needs a wide receiver that has extra running backs. Go make those trades. Try to get everything dialed in by Friday and then leave it alone Saturday and Sunday and have fun. All right, Ross. Barring injury. Ross, final thoughts? And make sure you tell everybody where to find you on Tickety Talk. Oh, I didn't put my name up. So, yeah, FF Brother Roz uh, on the tick. Um, the main thing to do, the main thing, the only thing that Stu uh, jumped over, he kind of put that in there with Start Your Studs, but the main thing today, right, you can't go to bed on a Wednesday, or you better do it by noon on a Thursday so you don't forget. Go through all of your rosters, whether you have one or 50, and you find all of your Giants and all of your Reds, uh, Washington football teamers, Mm -hmm. and you decide right then and there if they need to get out. Because if you don't, and they start on Thursday, there is no moving them within your roster. Get them out of your flex. If you okay. are starting them, get them out of your Hell, flip. this week, I would just get them the hell out. But if you do play them, get them out of any Thursday night football game. Get your players out of your flex. That way you have roster flexibility through the course of the weekend right. if injuries or gotcha. COVID so or whatever played, comes up. You can't up. use them then. If, yeah, you can't flex them after they've already played. Great thing to find out. All right. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. And we are going to for us today and we will leave you with a I can't do it we'll do it live okay. we'll do it live Fuck it. do it live I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live and thing sucks in 5 4 3 that's tomorrow and that is it for us today I'm Bill O'Reilly thanks again for